Alrighty, welcome to the PSBS, the Plays and Business Podcast. I'm your host, Co-T, PS and Bodybuilders. Co-host here is... Andrew Arenas, double is. Yes, and we are here on the actually episode 93. Yes, this is the actual 93. Actually 93, because uh forgot to... We, we, we miscounted last time, and we said it was 93, and I think I even... I, the title is 92, like on YouTube and all that, but the title card, if you look at it, says 93. Because by mm-hmm. the time I caught the error, I already made the file and everything and uploaded it. <sighs> it was just like, ah. Uh... So. That shaking of the head. Just don't look at the thumbnail. Just look at the title. The actual like title on the video and on the iTunes listing, brought to you by Dave Space, is... Uh, oh, that's right. ...is uh, 92. So. The little plug in there. little plug we in there, Dave Space. You can never thank him enough. Like, yeah, go, you know, go we, check out those... We, they, yeah, we, I mean, we think of so much that we don't bother to think of. <laughs> we don't bother to think of them. We just, it's just, you know, we just try to try to make it naturally fit into what we're talking about sometimes, and kind of got there. But yeah, check out Day Space. They, their living room clutter is now uh, past us. They're on episode ninety-five now, I believe. Shoot, that's right. Because we were, we were, we were like, we were actually even out where we're like on the same episode mm-hmm. for, for a while every week, but then. We kind of start slipping up, and they, they've surpassed us. They're on uh, 95 now. Uh, it's okay, but you know, uh, I don't know if it's appropriate to make this joke, but um, <laughs> we have uh, surpassed at least in number of episodes to another PlayStation podcast. <laughs> um, uh, we have been, um, like, the number one, like, the one that Colin and Greg do. Isn't there, I thought there was, like, 400 episodes of that. Well, that's beyond, but, like, their separate one. Oh, their new one? Yeah, we've at least surpassed that one. Oh, okay. Because uh, now they don't know what to do, so, you know, <laughs> that one's kind of in limbo right now. So we've surpassed them. Yeah, we went longer than of, that. <laughs> we went longer than that. So, you know, in terms of at least the episodes, uh, you know, made. But, <laughs> <laughs> talking about all this episode progress, uh, mm-hmm. that kind of brings me to a thing I might as well get done now out of the way at the beginning of this episode that's right uh announcement i have to make um the show will be changing to a degree mm-hmm. uh because we're gonna have to find a new day to record well even lately okay. we haven't exactly been keeping to a certain day <laughs> the past no. few weeks but i um, mean it, friday has really seemed like come comfortable day right now because you know i've been doing that but i don't know yeah but uh we're gonna go into more details off air like scheduling like what's gonna be the new day but we're definitely gonna uh start a new day and i'm gonna have to be a little more well how how do i put this i have to be a little bit more uh, careful of what i say on here right a little not, not 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 because of anything too big. Just kind of be a little more, um, because I'm not sure what what much I can say. But I do have a new job. Mm-hmm. And I start on Monday, and this is, yeah, today's Friday. Friday of us recording. I don't know when you're gonna actually hear this, but I start a new job on Monday, and I don't know how much I can say, but it is a a job that is in the video game industry. Okay, so it's somewhere within it. Somewhere within the video game industry. So and you can't I don't know. specifically say where yet. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I could probably. I could probably say. I'll, I'll know for sure next week. It's just I haven't like officially started the job yet, so I don't know what I can and can't tell people or say yeah. publicly, like on this. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, but but I should be able to say what it is next week. You know, I just want. Oh, be excellent! Sure. Thing that's quite a tease, but at least hey, guys, I could to know after. After this is over, <laughs> this is you over. You'll go the... you, you don't. I mean, yeah. but um, eh, but I mean, maybe. you'll be able to know. No, I can't I'm tell anybody, time. man. <laughs> but um, don't worry, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty co- closely lipped. <laughs> At least the people around me, and then you know, I mean, I don't tweet often, so I don't like say oh. it like out loud. I don't know, but anyway, um, so yeah, like I said, I start Monday, so by by next time we record, I should have an idea of what I can say about that. But, um, yeah, so de- definitely that's going to affect the podcast because mostly because of scheduling, cause I'm going to have a work schedule now. Mm-hmm. Um, so just figure out new time and day and all that to record. So 
we'll see how that goes with the show and all that. Because we're getting. Is so- it far from home? It's not that far. Oh, it's not that far. It's not too, not too bad. But um, yeah, because I know we're itching closer to episode one hundred. We keep delaying ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, we are, and like I'm already kind of lining up for like uh, the announcements that I could possibly make at 100. So, um, you know, for some things that I have lined up, um, person that I have that's working with me is a little bit busy with uh, relationships, but um, <laughs> other than that, um, I think uh, hopefully she can pull through. And um, you know, I, I mean, she is on spring break, so that's going to be a little bit of a, a hassle, but that's okay. She needs to enjoy herself out in uh, Disney World. But um, other than that, I think it should be fine, lining up to 100. Yep. So, but yeah. Anyway, the little housekeeping out of the way, we get to the show. Talk about some news and stuff, and we got questions this week. Yeah, we already we have two questions pertaining to uh, Mass Effect Andromeda this week. I mean, mm. kind of getting that guy kind of out of the bag already. Um, mm. We want to answer it right if, now because yeah, I might want to let, let's let's save that for a bit. Let's let's get some smaller things out before we start talking about Mass Effect. That's right. So let's see, let's see what we got here. Some news and stuff this week. Um, I don't see kind of small on my news list. We'll see. We'll uh, how we fill this out. But it was announced this past week or so that Resident Evil Rev- Revelations is coming to PS4 and Xbox One in the fall, 2017. Oh. Um, uh, the game was originally released on 3DS and it was later released for uh, PS3 and 360 and PC. Um, it's finally coming to PS4. So this is interesting uh, because the, cause the second one's on PS4 because that was the one they made for PS4. It was episodic and all that. Um, mm-hmm. So it's kind of neat going back to the first one because I never played either one. But... But fans really liked it, or at least the first one. I I, I thought this. I don't know. I think the reception to the second one was kind of mixed, mostly because of the episodic thing. But people really liked the first one, kind of like back to more like a little bit more of like what Resident Evil Four was, but more horror focused. So yeah, Resident Evil Revelations. That one was interesting because that one came to PS3, right? So yeah. that one just never made a PS4. Nope, but now it is. But we got Revelations 2 on PS4, right? Yeah, Revelations 2. Get it? Because Revelations 2 was made for like the new systems as episodic thing. Like, I Look, know. I know like a lot of the, all of these Resident Evil games you know are separate. Like, I wonder if we're just going to get a big-ass Resident Evil like compendium collection thing on PS4 <laughs> that just combines everything. Because this is a little out of hand. I just Everything's so separated. Well, I mean, they kind of did that on PS3 when they did that, like, collectors, the collector edition of Resident Evil 6 that came with everything. All the main, All the numbered games were in there. Mm. With, you know, they came with a voucher code for one, two, three, four, and five, and then you got six on disc. Holy crap, so I can look at that at GameStop. Well, I don't know if you can get it, still get it now, but. Um, Wait, like, you crack open the case? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, they don't, I don't think they make the same, because I got this, I got this one, and I got all the games, all the main games uh, for PS3. So you, so you got that for free? No, I bought it. Oh, oh, that was on PS3? This is on PS3. Oh, okay. You you got me excited there. I thought it was like PS4. No, this was back on PS3. They did this. There was a collector's edition of Resident Evil Six. It was like seventy or eighty dollars, and it came with all the main Resident Evil games. Hmm. So that was the version I got of that. So I got all the games with that. Um, if they do something like that for PS4, no, they haven't done anything like that yet. Um, well, they did do that one bundle thing where it came with um, Resident Evil One and Zero bundled together. Right on disc, um, but that's it. They haven't done any other ones, which they kind of really should do. Like you're saying, do a, like a bundle thing that comes with like you know yeah. four, five, and six. Mm-hmm. Um, and then look, I understand it. that all of them can be separate. And, you know, you have a reason to go get it on the PlayStation Store digitally, but I just feel like you know, massive, not massive, oh, <laughs> Resident Evil is such a big franchise with a lot of games in it that I would like you know a Metal Gear collection style. You know, just bundle all the games in one, even seven, even seven. But that is a little recent. Yeah, it is recent. So, like, so I you know, I wouldn't, this, would, this would definitely not be $60. It would be awkward's up to maybe like $120. Mm. <laughs> but it has to be a bundle price, you know? I don't. I mean, that's. <laughs> um, I mean, Resident Evil is a new game. And it comes with everything, dude. Like, all the DLC for seven and, like, everything. everything. Basically, the definitive versions of all these games. Yeah, about like a hundred or hundred twenty. Yeah, 
Uh, but yes, you said it should be a bundle price. But I don't know. Well, we'll, uh, we'll see on that. Um, but that's coming out in the fall. So maybe check it out. We'll see. Um, but speaking of horror games, um, a thing I report uh, listing came out this past week of somebody having a Evil Within sequel listed on their uh, job uh, resume application, whatever, job listing. On, on the that. on the LinkedIn LinkedIn yeah, uh, LinkedIn yeah LinkedIn or something like that. Um, saying that they worked on a game called Psycho Break Two, which Psycho Break <laughs> is the well Psycho Break is the name of Evil Within in Japan. Yeah, um, kind of like how Biohazard is the name of Resident Evil in Japan, and here is just Resident Evil there. It's Biohazard. So yeah, so I mean, this basically points to the fact that Evil Within Two is in development and possibly coming soon. So, I mean, uh, Evil Within did relatively well for it to get a sequel then. Yes. Um, which is kind of weird because Evil Within has been like... Evil Within... Here's the thing about Evil Within. <laughs> it went so low in price so fast, though. It did. Like, it was like 40 within a week. Yeah, within like a week or so of release, it dropped down to 40 And for the past year or so, it's been constantly going on sale for like 5 bucks. In fact, it's on sale right now for $5. You can go get it right now with all the DLC for like $6 on the PlayStation Store right now. So with this like somewhat not announcement, I mean it's the Shadow of Mordor two situation where you see the, or Shadow of War I should say situation where we know on the job listing of someone that they worked on the new Shadow of Mordor game, yeah, and then with this it's uh, a little bit different, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's difficult. Uh, I mean it's yeah. I mean they already put out the sales figures for Evil Within right, and Bethesda has stated that it has done well. Yeah, it has it has it was considered a success. It's just one of those things where like I don't know was it a success because it was so cheap and people kept buying it on sale or like what I don't know. Mm. It was just one of those things where like that was a game that like went on sale so fast and it's been on sale for a while too. Like I said, you can get it right now. Cause I think it's like part of the flash sale, the weekend sale, something like that, where the base game is five dollars, or you can get it with all the DLC for like six. Mm-hmm. Which is insane. I think that game came at a time in the generation when we had a lot of because that was twenty fourteen. Yes. Evil Within, Evil Within um, when we had a lot of, a, of multiplayer games and a lot of people were aching for, you know, bang, bang for the buck and having open world games, but like, you know, a single player horror game at the time was a little uh, off putting to some people to spend $60 on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, once we had games like Alien Isolation, Evil Within, Resident Evil 7 come along, you know, it's becoming a little bit more justified. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, and here's the thing too I love Evil Within. Mm-hmm. Like it was such a good game. Like it was this game that kind of came out of nowhere, and it was one of those games too that kind of proved the whole like preview cycle. Of preview it, cycle thing. Preview well. Yeah, where like people like outlets were like doing the preview cycle. Nah, and, like, yeah, they were all like, Ew. yeah, people were like hating this in the previews, like saying how like oh like this, like none of this is making sense or um, just like people were like really like put basically off. that that it wasn't making any sense to them. Like they didn't yeah, understand because like, every everything they were playing was so out of context that they couldn't like. It just wasn't. It wasn't working. It wasn't working to play in small parts. You kind of need the whole thing for it to come together. And that's the thing about horror games. They still don't preview well. Really. No. Um, so it was one of those things. We, and then when it finally did come out, critics played it and liked it. And they really liked it. They got it got good reviews. And I played it. And I loved it. It's it's kind of what I want in a horror game. Like it was the true like like I, I've said this before. But it's like the true successor to Resident Evil Four. You know. Oh, the truth. So now, I mean, Resident Evil Seven is different because you know it's in first person. And all yeah, that. Resident Evil Seven. Resident Evil Seven is still really good. Resident Evil Seven is really good. Um, but it was still Resident Evil was good. Resident Evil Seven was good because it was trying something different, but still going back to kind of what originally made Resident Evil work. You know, the, the God of War situation. Yeah. Um, but with um with Evil Within, it's more like if you want something that's still more like the gameplay. Or kind of like visual style of Resident Evil 4, but still more kind of focus on like the whole survival elements and like really, you know, rationing out your ammo and supplies and all that. Um, you Within was just fantastic at doing all that. Um, but yeah, I loved it. And I'm really excited for the idea of like uh, Evil Within 2 possibly coming out, you know, soon. Yeah, ooh. Uh, that'll definitely be an announcement to come at E3. Yeah, if it comes out this year, it comes in like September, October. Really? Oh shoot! It's a really yeah. I mean, look, because due to the fact that games like this don't preview the best, because heck, Resident Evil Seven wasn't its demo the beginning of the game. It wasn't like a middle portion, right? 
That demo. Um, yeah, or was that a the, separate thing? The the demo was weird. The demo mm-hmm. was a port of the game, but it was different when you actually played it. Okay, yeah, because it didn't have like multiple outcomes of it or whatever. Yeah, the, it was like a small portion of kind of like the idea of the game, but like when you play it, it's like I don't know, it's different. Oh, okay. I mean, it's not that this is just—it's not that what's in the demo is because, like, the way Capcom described this, that oh, what's in the demo is not at all in the game. Like, it was a whole separate thing that wasn't even like that's not even going to be in the final game. But it's, that's not true. What was in the demo was at the beginning of the game. So, because yeah, it's just a lot of horror games. You know, they don't really like to have demos that are like put you dab in the middle of like the campaign. Yeah, that it doesn't work because you're just so like, what's focused. going on? You're like, yeah, like what's going on? Uh, and yeah, Resident Evil demo was basically the first hour of the game. And I think if you do play a trial of like Outlast, for instance, it's the beginning of the game. Yeah, they don't want you to drive in the middle where like. And what other game? Well, PT was PT, but like you know that never happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. PT um, was PT. Yeah, I mean, well, with that, yeah, with Outlast, you're kind of in the middle. You don't know what's going on story wise, but like, and then you know the stuff where like something like Evil Within or like something like Evil Within Problem Two is like it really matters what weapons you have, what supplies you have. So it's one of the things where if you like make a demo that drops you somewhere in the middle. You, you start to, like, predetermine what guns you have, what ammo you have, and all that. It does take away that whole, like, you, like, preparing for this moment, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, deciding what weapons you upgraded, what you want, and all that. Because that was the thing about... That was, man, Evil Within... Just thinking back how good Evil Within was. Um, <laughs> it was I mean, seriously, go buy... If you haven't... If, you, if you're, like, remotely interested in the game, please just go buy it. It's $5 right now. Go get it with the DLC. Even though I didn't finish the DLC, I started it. I didn't really care for the DLC, though. I heard it wasn't like the greatest. It's not the greatest. The problem with the DLC is that again they try to make it like Outlast, where it's like, oh, no direct combat, just hiding. Ah, uh, um, you know, and it's just like, oh wait, did you ever get around to the Outlast uh, DLC? I have it. I haven't played it yet. Oh, okay, okay. I'm just making sure. I'm like, wait, you, like you played it? No, I'm talking about the, the Evil Within DLC. I know you were just comparing it to the Outlast DLC. Yeah. I was like, oh shit, you played uh, Finally yeah. Whistleblower? No, I didn't play Whistleblower yet. When I wanted you to play all these years. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can play it before part two comes out to prep me. I just feel bad that I'm really talking this DLC of a big game, but like in turn, it's not actually like the greatest piece of DLC ever. You're going to be like, what, what was this? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you'll get at least two trophies out of it, so. <laughs> mm. For but, uh, like an hour and a half. Playing. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, the Evil Within DLC wasn't the greatest. But I mean, for an extra dollar or two, you might as well. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, you might as well go for it. You might as well, so you have it all. Um, so it's there. But yeah, Evil Within was just so good. You know, really made you like it. Really mattered what you upgraded. Like when you got to the point where it's like, oh, upgrade your skills, like your health, your ammo, your whatever. Like it really mattered. It was like, oh, like you kind of sit there and like, what do I really need? And when you upgrade one, and you keep playing a bit. Like, damn, I should have went with that other upgrade or. Something, mm-hmm. you know? Such a good game. Really, really excited for the second one. Yeah, we'll definitely get that announcement come uh, Bethesda conference time. Don't dumb it down. <laughs> oh! <laughs> that's oh the no, problem. you're, you're, afraid, you're that's afraid of the sequel dumb down. Yeah, the, afraid of the sequel dumb down. Because that's the problem with games like Evil Within where, like, you know, when it comes out and, like, when a very specific audience embraces it, you know, like me that, like, loves this, like, hardcore kind of idea of survival horror, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, like, they kind of look at it and go, oh, well, yeah, these people really liked it, but we kind of want to, you know, reach that wider audience, you know. Right, because it's a sequel and it would sell more. Sell more, maybe if we, you know, steamline it a bit, and then I'm just kind of like, oh, no. We'll see. I mean, those guys over there are really smart. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. There, there is ways to improve Evil Within, but I'm just, I just don't want it to be, like, completely dumbed down and kind of take away what made it good to begin with, you know. Mm-hmm. So. And this is remarkable too because this is because the original Evil with it was a long time coming, wasn't it? Yeah, we heard about that game in terms of development a while. Like it was, we we kept hearing about it. And then at least for the sequel turnaround, you know, this was expectedly at least sooner. It was it's not too long by then. It'll already be about three years. Yeah, and then like you said too, they probably just want to avoid that long preview cycle so it doesn't. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. because what's the point of even previewing this it's game? I mean, you can let some out, let's play it for a little bit, give their initial impressions. But I would think that Bethesda maybe let you just play the beginning of the game, or at least have like a little demo video at E3, and then just that's about it. You basically won't hear anything about it until it comes out. Yeah, 
Uh, oh yeah, because Bethesda does have an E3 uh, thing this year. Yes, mm-hmm. they do. Yeah. I mean, dude, they got things to announce. Elder Scrolls Online. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Elder Scrolls Online. Um, they're gonna show uh, the anything relative to Fallout. Yeah, they're gonna have more updates for the Morrowind expansion because already be out by then. Um, they will. Or, or, or just coming out. Like Wolfenstein. Uh, yeah, they're gonna announce Wolfenstein Two. They're gonna announce Evil Within Two. That's what they're. Uh, I mean, yeah, they'll have people with them, too. Um, what else do you think they'll have? Um, Wolfenstein? Yeah, Wolfenstein 2 is probably for sure. Even within 2 is for sure. Um, you know, some update on Elder Scrolls Online. Woohoo! Woo-hoo. Uh, I mean, wait a minute. Isn't a, a, like, a big expansion coming out for Elder Scrolls Online a little bit before E3? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, they're going to like really kind of celebrate that over there. Like, hey, you guys are playing that Merlin <laughs> expansion? <laughs> 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 Look, that's not look. That's not a dig at Elder Scrolls Online because actually, Elder Scrolls Online is actually a really good game yeah. from its launch. I mean, at first yeah. it was like inner mockery of how poor the initial launch on PC was at the time, but then once it migrated to consoles, um, non-subscription based, the game's actually fantastic. Yeah, people really dig that game, and we're just mm-hmm. we, you know we just like I said, it's just it was just it's, funny. It's funny because that one we'll person get excited about Elder Scrolls Online. <laughs> And that one particular person, yeah, at E3. You can yeah, there's that one particular person, and kind of the fact that not really, it's not like a like going to appeal to that many people, you know? It's just kind of like a geeky kind of thing. <laughs> You're just like, oh, it's all like a lot of it, it exists. It's there. It exists, <laughs> people play it, they dig it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are probably, I bet you, there's more concurrent players of Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim remaster than online but uh, probably could be wrong i don't know but uh yeah um but this is lining up a pretty exciting uh e3 i don't know if they're gonna have any dlc for uh dishonored 2 or anything like that if they were even planning dlc is there like a season pass for dishonored no um and pray well yeah pray's already gonna be out oh by pray then. that's right wait will pray already be out by then yeah pray comes out in may may yeah Oh, Prey is looking so good. Yeah, Prey is looking cool. Yeah, Prey, Prey is looking we really cool. We know right away, but... <laughs> oh, uh, that's right. Reviews. Yeah, no one's getting review copies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, gonna be one, it's weird, because it's one of those things where like it is, but it isn't a new IP, you know? So it's kind of one of those things where like I kind of want to get an idea of how people are digging it, you know? Well, I mean, Arcane's track record is already proving pretty well There's so some. far, I mean. So, you know, do we really have anything too much to worry about? But then again. Never know. <laughs> Never know. We'll see. Or else um, we'll be going over to the Metacritics and being a little angry. <laughs> yeah. For no reason. But, I mean, that's something we can see. Like, I mean, Prey or Beyond, so they just kind of give like a little update on Prey. Like, oh, yeah, people are really digging Prey. You know, we're just doing good. All right. Um, in the, yeah, maybe we can see something for Dishonored 2. Like, maybe a DLC expansion. Like, kind of like a you know, something kind of a little more substantial, kind of like a story expansion to it, just to kind of keep, mm-hmm. you know, just to keep something relevant, keep people thinking about the Dishonored IP. Um, kind of like what happened with um, Wolfenstein when they did, oh, uh, yeah. when they did the, what was it called? The Old Blood. The Old Blood. Yeah, <sighs> something like that for like for Dishonored. I cannot too. wait for Wolfenstein. I think either that, okay, Shadow of War, Wolfenstein, that's like probably either like what I most anticipate getting through the year. Red Dead probably. 2. Or if, if it comes out this year. If it comes out this year. That, that's your thing, though. You're not 100% that movie that game's even coming out this year. Yeah, because, you know, I'm forgetting about that one because I haven't even listed that as a game of the year 2017 because, like, I'm not even 100% confident that's even coming out this year. It might even get, I think I'll probably get delayed because if we don't hear anything more about Red Dead 2, no, I mean, it's not going to have an E3 presence. It could. You never know. Um, but it, it, Rockstar always does their own separate thing. So if there isn't, like, a preview media event for it, like a secret media event to play Red Dead 2 by... What was GTA 5's previous cycle on it? It was uh, either May or June. Then the game's not coming out this year. If there's no like media like frenzy thing on Red Dead 2, if IGN maybe doesn't have like IGN first thing on Red Dead 2 or anything like that, or just some Game of Former piece, then we're not getting this game this year, unfortunately. Yeah. If it's not by the end of June, no. So yeah. we'll get a big preview on it, like where it's in a playable state, and we get to. I'm sure it is on a playable state, but you know, playable to it's playable state to the media to uh, outlets out, out there to give their impressions on it, like they did GTA Five all those years ago. 
So kind of giving a reality check to some people on that because, you know, we haven't heard of anything of Red Dead 2 since October. Or when, when was the Switch announced? Was that October? Right? Mm-hmm. Was that, yeah. 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 I don't know. So, gosh, can you believe it's not even that long ago? So, you know. By the end of the summer, fingers crossed, I'll have something on Red Dead 2. Mm-hmm. Please. Rockstar, give it to us. But, um, yeah, either one of those three games, hopefully. Yeah, but uh, right now, it's uh, Shadow of War. Most anticipated game of the year so far. Yep. Uh, but speaking of games coming out this year. Ooh. A lot of um, games. A lot of games. Um, there, we got somewhat of an update on God of A uh, slight thing, possibly, with the new God of War. Yeah, we, it's, it's, it's so weird with God of War that we get these, like, ever so slightly updates. Like, oh, yeah, the game is fully playable from the beginning to the end, but we're not really going to disclose that, really. But it is. It, but, it is. Uh, but um, anyway, the, the new voice actor for Kratos, because he does have oh. a different voice than he did in the first, right. well, last couple games. Mm-hmm. As we've heard in E3. Um, Christopher Judge is the voice actor, and he updated his Twitter today or yesterday um, saying, like, projects he's recently worked on, and one of them is God of War, and he put in parentheses 2017. Yeah. So that's people Mm, kind of thinking, like, is this coming out this year? Is this, like, this is a 2017 release, you know? I would hope that we get a release date announcement at E3. I hope. Yeah. Because, I mean, we we talked about this, actually, like, probably the last episode, the episode before, kind of what... What's Sony's plan for like the first party games this year? Yeah, it's very strange because you know we're still the ones that the, the ones that we're keen on. Hopefully, that coming out this year is Beyond Two. Not, oh my gosh, that's Beyond Two. Detroit, uh, Become Human, and God of War, and Spider Man. Detroit. Well, Spider Man's not really first God party, War, but it's exclusive. Spider Man and uh, Grand Turismo. Uh, Grand Turismo has to be this year, I guess, but it got delayed, and we haven't got any update on when the hell it's coming out. Um, <laughs> but yeah I mean I, I don't want to go too deep back into it but basically my prediction was Spider-Man uh, at, at, at E3 we're going to get Spider-Man will be announced to come out either in September or October and God of War will be announced for November or December and then right. uh, Detroit Become Human will be, cut, will be January or February that was, oh, well. that was basically our Yeah, that's right. Oh, stuff. yeah, we did kind of go over how Detroit needs its room to breathe much like, well, not really. I mean, Horizon got its time to breathe, but, you know. I mean, it's not that it was outshined by Zelda. Actually, the two kind of went hand in hand with each other where they got equal spotlight in a way, yeah. you know. But, I mean, February's become a good spot for Sony because, like, they put out um, Horizon in February. Granted, that was, like, at the very end of the month, but. <laughs> Still, though, they put out Horizon in February. They put out the Order in February. Um, yeah, they did so... put out the Order in February. So, like, they're using February as a month to put out first-party titles. Um, yeah, you know, it, it was different. I mean, the order was more in the middle of February, but, like, Horizon couldn't just come out in March. But, I mean, you know it couldn't come out in March because of the Switch. Yeah, but still, though, Sony is using February as yeah. as a release kind of... No matter what day in so, February, it doesn't matter. So, like, I can see, like, Detroit Become Human come out in, like, February. You know, a game that kind of yeah. really can Oh, get yeah, it. I would love... I, I Actually, I would be fine with Detroit coming out um, February 2018. That's kind of what I'm feeling. And then I feel like I said God of War would be either November or December and then Spider-Man September or October. Because, yes, it'll be another year of seeing uh, Detroit. But, you know, I just want that definitive release date on it, you know? I don't I don't want the fall and then having the delay, having that PlayStation blog post again, you know? I don't, I don't want David Cage to have to explain himself because he knows if he wants the true emotion, he wants to kind of come out of 2018. <laughs> He doesn't need to get emotional while writing the PlayStation <laughs> blog post about telling fans that it's delayed because you're going to upset the fans. And then, you know, yeah. just at least get their expectations and check that, you know, it's not going to come out this year. And I'd be perfectly fine with that. But yeah, I, I just feel like that's like an early 2018, like January, February game. But God of War, I think, does need to come out this year. That needs to be like another thing at E3 where, yes, you're showing God of War again, but show a different portion of it. And then the ending thing is, hey, this time we got a release date and this is it. And then people are going to be like, Whoa! Mm-hmm. that's it. Yeah, that's going to be like the real cl- crowd pleaser moment that E3 had to have the release date of God of War. Yep. yep. When, when do you think God of War fits in this? Um, like I said, either November or December. Um, I'm leaning a bit more December because I feel like it can do well like in like the first week of December kind of released, you know? Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, all the God of War games have, well, at least God of War 3 came out in March, and then Ascension came out, like, in February or March. March. Most, of them, most of them have come out in March, yeah. 
Yeah, so this is a different place for God of War. But Fine. I feel like that's a big holiday uh, seller for them. Like, especially if they actually like say, "Hey, we're going to finally bundle this with the PS4 Pro," because the Pro would be like a year old. Have a PS4 Pro having a bundled game? Uh, <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, by December, November, by November, December, it had been a year since the Pro came out. So now it's kind of like that point where, like, okay, it's been a year. Let's start bundling this with something. You know? Yeah. When are we going to get some more fun PlayStation Pro bundles where we're going to have? You know, colored PlayStation Four Pros. You know, have something a little bit more fun to it. Uh, you know, if they do a Spider-Man one, <laughs> yeah, Spider-Man, Unless, well, Spider-Man, yeah, Spider-Man, PlayStation 4. Spider-Man will definitely have PlayStation like Pro support. Yeah, well, but like, I mean, like you're saying, like, yeah, like do a PlayStation Four Pro that's like color, like, like color yeah. When are we gonna start getting more fun bundles? You yeah, know, do like, a, a Spider-Man one. Codes or something, or yeah, Spider-Man ones, or it comes with like a digital copy of Spider-Man Homecoming or something. Or it comes with the 4K Blu-ray. No, it comes with the 4K Blu-ray of <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah. If it even gets a 4K Blu-ray. Well, uh, no, you can't put a 4K Blu-ray with a PS4 Pro. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's like literally insulting yourself. <laughs> like, if somebody were to put a, the, the, the Spider-Man Homecoming 4K Blu-ray with their <laughs> Pro bundle, like, you, oh, sorry, you can't play this, but here's like a here's like a coupon to go buy an Xbox One S. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they're gonna just stop me there. So we'll have to come with a standard Blu-ray of Spider-Man have, Homecoming. Yeah, it had to be it had to be a digital copy. So you can stream it in 4K. <laughs> you know? But you can never get it straight from the source from your disc to nope, the television. You can only stream it in 4K. You can't you can't uh Yeah, that's gonna be kinda messed up though when Spider Man Homecoming does come out in four K Blu-ray and you can only like really watch it on your Xbox. <laughs> Or, you know, if uh, when it comes to Netflix and the months after it gets released on digital, you know. Yeah, so it's like, uh, I can only watch this on my Xbox if I want to watch the 4K Blu-ray. Does Netflix have feature films in 4K? Mm, no. No, it doesn't. That's that's interesting. But it can weird. have full-on television shows, but it can't have films. Yeah, it's weird. Like, pretty much mm. um, all the original content is in 4K. All the original content is 4K, and a handful mm-hmm. of non-original shows are in 4K, like Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, um, and a couple other things are like in 4K that are not like Netflix originals. Yeah, l- let me not put on my nerd cap on you or anything and kind of deny you, but I think there might be just like a handful of Netflix comedies that might not be in 4K. Yeah, Netflix I mean, like original the, ones. Well, okay. How do I word this? Yeah, see, I'm putting on my nerves. Yeah, I know, like, I know, I know. Okay, Netflix originals that are like r- originally, originally Netflix and not like import shows, like how like they're the no, they're not import. No, like even ones that there's some that like Netflix original comedies from Netflix that aren't in 4K. Like, Ma- is Masters of None in 4K? Um, I don't know if season two is gonna be. I I'm pretty sure season two is gonna be because that's like their standard right now for most of their stuff. Um, there's there's that there's a couple that are 10 just 1080p. Still, but like originally, originally Netflix, not like okay, because like yeah, there's they, they are yeah. Netflix. They didn't, they didn't move on from. The, well, actually, there's one. I mean, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt was 1080p on the first first season, but then in 4K in its next one. Yeah, because that one that because that, that first season yeah. that first season was made for NBC. That second season was made for Netflix. Yeah, so that one's in 4K, but I think there is at least a couple of other ones that are just have still remained 1080p, even beginning, even like just last year. Okay, well, all the Netflix shows you should be watching oh, are in 4K. Uh, <laughs> Mark Miller. Um, and then the import <laughs> shows, I don't know. It's true. Not every. I don't think every single Netflix show, or Netflix original show is in 4K. I can guarantee you that. Whatever, man. <laughs> just, I, I know, but I'm just, I'm just at least Stating that as a fact. As a fact, but you're not 100 percent sure. I'm no, I'm like pretty sure. Well, that's just the thing. Even if one isn't, you're right. Then though, that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you, you you have a very small more <laughs> error. Like, mm-hmm. eh. That's right. Whatever. But uh, so God of War, end of the year. <laughs> God of War, yeah. <laughs> I think God of War is coming out this year. Hopefully, you can this make year. those like, game award, game of the year award dates, you know, before mm-hmm. you know that media. Out- that's the, that's the thing that sucks about Denver, you know. Does it want to get it out before awards time? Oh yeah, because that's what happened with um, 
Final the Fantasy. Last Guardian and, and Final Fantasy. Yeah, they came out too late for. Well, yeah. Last Guardian actually ended up getting some awards afterwards, like after well after the big ones. It got like you know the technical awards and all that. Mm. It got its fair share of awards, but it didn't get like you know the big ones. I mean, do we really need to count like game awards? It's like a big one really anymore. I mean, it's not that I was salty about, you know, Overwatch winning, but, you know, it's just, uh, it's the Game Awards, for crying out loud. And I, I don't know if I'm going to sacrifice another college night um, watching the Game Awards on the live stream anymore <laughs> after last year. But we'll see. I mean, well, who am I kidding? I'm probably going to watch it anyways because of the trailers. <laughs> and then having our, our show about it. Because, you know, we, we go over that and then the, um, what is it? Open PlayStation Explorer. Anyway. <laughs> oh no, I don't want to sneeze. How do, how do you block sneezing? How do you block sneezing? I don't know. But anyway, yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, basically just sum up again. I think out of war should be this year. Worst case scenario, it gets pushed to March. That's the latest. It's March. Uh, latest. Latest is March. But anyway, moving on to other news we got. Uh, oh yeah, so so you 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 brought this to my attention this week. I'm gonna go look this up. Oh, really? what else did um, I bring to your attention? What did I bring to your attention? So it just got randomly released this week. Uh, Ghostbusters. Oh yeah. hiring <laughs> Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters hiring <laughs> Firehouse is a VR experience that was released. No, this it's week. Ghostbusters like for hire or something. Yeah, Ghostbusters for hire Firehouse, whatever it's called. Yeah, but you were saying like Ghostbusters Firehouse for hire or something. You were like, no, the title, the, the official title is Ghostbusters is hiring Firehouse. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the title of it. It's a VR experience that came out this week, and you, 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 you messaged me because like, hey, you should these VR things to your attention that you never like even like even think of. You know, okay. I, I would do whatever okay. that my VR well, headset. Okay. I'm well, well, okay. Well, okay. Well, here's the thing. You brought this to my attention. <laughs> that there's this Ghostbusters VR experience. So I was like, okay, uh-huh. let me go check it out. I went, to the store. I went to the PlayStation Store. Um, it costs six ninety nine. It does, yes. Then I'm gonna go look it up online. What people were saying about it. Oh, yeah. It's a ten minute experience. <laughs> it's a ten minute long experience for six ninety nine. Right. And then the developers of it were talking about how, like, oh, this is just the first chapter in our. <laughs> Uh, and what we want to kind of keep making these. This is the first chapter to see what if people are liking it and they dig it. We're gonna, uh, you know, oh, that price more, point they're gonna dig it for, yeah, for their <laughs> chapters and stuff. And I'm like, and I don't even know. I think I don't know if this is even considered an app or a game. Like, is there trophies? I don't even know. I think this is considered. I, an I don't app. think there is actually. Yeah, I think it's just considered an app. It's not even considered really a game. Mm. And I'm just like, oh. Oh, it's like this is the problem with VR right now. It's just a lot of these experiences are kind of like really short and they cost a lot. And it's just hard to really like invest in all this, you know, because like, like another one you keep asking me about is Robinson, you know, like, oh, you should check yes, out Robinson. Robinson. Yes, Robinson, the journey. And it's one of those things I want to check it out, but it's still, you know, got really mixed reviews. And like the cheapest I've seen so far is like 40. And it's one of the things where I don't want to throw down 40 and then I like play for 10 minutes and say, no, I can't do this. Because, you like, know. I'm always so curious to hear your impressions on it because, like, whenever you come out of a VR experience, you give me that what you think yeah. of that VR experience. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, because, I, like, you were there. Yeah, I had a good VR experience, as I told you, like, with uh, Until Dawn Rose Blood 7. and Resident Evil 7 and all that. And But that was the thing, though. At launch, I bought all these games and I played them, like, most of them. And then after launch, I have played a few, like, little things here and there, but never really bought any VR games since then until Resident Evil 7. So it's kind of like, Okay, and then my the next big one's not till May with Farpoint. Yeah, man, that's pretty far. Gosh, five months from, from like your last. Well, there was Resident Evil Seven. Resident Evil Seven was in January, and the Farpoint's in May. Still five months. <laughs> four months. Yeah, four months. Um, 
Yeah, you know, I always bring these things to your attention so you can see, like, what you might possibly think. But, you know, I didn't really fully expect you to buy Ghostbusters. But, you know, I wanted to bring it to your attention because yeah. there's no lead-up to this. It just popped up on the store. Yeah, it just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, hey, check this out. Which is kind of like, funny. I mean, it looked neat from when I was looking at it on YouTube. But, but like, you can watch so one fun. video and you see the whole thing. Like, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I saw it. I was like, wait, it's really this short? You can walk around and do some stuff. But then again, I know you don't like it. But, like, the teleporting thing is the teleport. Situation. You like point and teleport to where you yeah. want. Yeah, it's crummy like, in that sense. So it's like it's like the Lara Croft Manor thing from Tomb Raider. Yeah, so it's one of those things you're like, <sighs> yeah, it's like kind of like a kind of yeah. Let's see, it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, they got Patton Oswalt in the voice, like one of the, the ghosts, and the yeah. Um, so like you know, if, if there were like four episodes of this, this would only combine total to be like a thirty minute game. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, they they didn't put out season pass for this. <laughs> oh oh, you should be. I mean, uh, surprised, right? I don't know. But that's the thing about it. So with this like little experimentation that probably not many people are going to buy due to this high price point and short length. That I don't know. This Ghostbusters maybe has a potential to be, you know, a VR franchise. You know, VR game yeah. franchise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is something we talk about a lot too. Like, you know, should more movies be kind of like move on and become like more like a game franchise you know oh i know how many like how many movie vr experiences have we heard about like john wick the martian uh west world for tv yeah, and all but... this i wonder if the future of the licensed game is going to be in vr yeah and then the problem with all these like vr experiences is that like the problem is they're prioritizing and making them exclusive to certain you know vr headsets and it's kind of like, yeah, whether it be oculus or um htc yeah, or htc or something and i mean this is something we talked about too a while back it's one of those things where like at this point in vr's life cycle we can't really do exclusives right now we kind of need the content on all platforms yeah because i mean when's batman hitting Not, like in two months uh Forever? yeah i think i think over the summer i think it's coming on the summer for um it was like a six months else. exclusivity or yeah, like it was like six months? months it was six months okay so it should be sometime in the summer um, and I think uh, I think Resident Evil Seven. I said it's like a year. It'll be a year before they put Resident Evil Seven on. Uh, Jeez, Resident Evil Seven is a year. Ones. So it's one yeah. of those things where, like, the problem, is, like I said, is just limiting the VR audience because now it's kind of like, oh, you only need this or that, and it's kind of affecting things. Like you said, the John Wick one, I think, was only on Oculus. Um, they're developing some Blade Runner ones, uh, but it's only for Oculus. <sighs> So it's kind of but like, I mean, these are just experiences. They're not full fledged games. Yeah. <coughs> so. Well, and then oh, what was another one that came out just this week, which you could probably go check out. They're probably talking about it over on Living Room Clutter. But uh, Rock Band VR came out this week. Yeah, that one's on Oculus. Uh, but it's only on Oculus. So I'm like, why can't you put this on PlayStation? <laughs> yeah. Well, no. because Oculus funded the game. Because you know, Harmonics can't fund them anything themselves anymore, right? So you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they do that help they're being like double fine yeah a little bit yeah because uh harmonics doesn't have the gains to do that so because they always want to span out and do other things but not you know sustain a business focusing on one thing and making lots of money from it so you know why not work on mobile things and just kind of even everything out that way yeah. and have your work have your workforce even smaller than it normally is yeah so yeah, it's just whatever. Um, but I don't know. I haven't really heard anything about Rocket Band VR, so I wonder if any of uh, Living Room Clutter even has a, a Oculus to even try all this. <laughs> it's a bit of a, a bit of a barrier of entry there. <laughs> Actually, maybe they can get someone for Rock Band Aid to talk about it because uh, they have some connections over there. So I'm pretty sure someone from Rock Band Aid has an uh, Oculus Rift headset and probably has played it. Yeah. But um, with these VR experiences. You know, it's whatever. It's not too much of a big deal for me, you know? So, I don't know. Yeah, for you, because you... <laughs> I don't own one just yet. I don't own yet, one just so, yet, you know? You know, but, I don't. But, yeah, but I mean, for me, it's like, I want to try more of these okay. VR experiences. I just don't want to kind of spend a lot and then kind of be like, oh, this isn't wasn't worth that or something. I don't know. Which, I mean, you can apply that to every game, really. It's just, for VR particularly, it's kind of one of those things where you want something to really justify the headset itself, you know? Yeah, but what about this gray area of uh, PlayStation exclusive VR games, like Gran Turismo? You can't have those anywhere else. Well, that's different, because, like, Gran Turismo, the game, is only available on PlayStation. So it's one of those things where, by default, yeah, the VR function of it is going to be exclusive to PlayStation. But, like, something like 
you know, like Batman, it's like, oh, well, this doesn't need to be exclusive pledge because it's not a place in IP or anything like that. So it's like, it should be on more platforms, and it will, it's just later. Same thing with Resident Evil, it'll be later. Yeah, so, that's right. I mean, yeah, when it's first party, that's like, that's just how it is, you know, because it's Sony's first party. Like, of course, we're, we're going to, you know, keep it on our platform, but so it means like little, like, even though, like I said, the smaller things I don't think really needs to be exclusive to any one platform, you know? All right. But, We'll see, and then because this one too, we talked about back. Sony did say that we're that, that they're doing supposed to be doing more VR experiences that like tie in with their movie and music properties and stuff. And this is kind of it. This is like the first kind of thing we're seeing, like this Sony uh, produced uh, Ghostbusters experience, uh, because that's something we talked about. Like, oh, well, they might do a Spider Man one. You know, once we get closer to uh, Spider Man Homecoming. Oh, Spider Man VR experience. That one I might throw down seven dollars for. <laughs> Even if it's like. 10 minutes? Even if it's 10 minutes? If it's 10 minutes of me just swinging around first person with a VR headset, it's going to be worth it. Because you could do it over and over again. Yeah, I'll do that over and over again. Hey, there's Iron Fist. Yeah. <laughs> He's back from Come Lung. Come Lung. Oh, shoot. I probably shouldn't have said that. Sorry. That's part of his lore. That's not a spoiler. <laughs> oh, okay. Good. I wanted to make sure I didn't spoil the game. Uh, but, yeah. I just uh, saw somebody walking past uh, this little office I'm in. I think he was holding a Pokédex. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah I, I think it might a phone case. So I, I don't know if it was like an actual Pokédex. Like, I remember having my own Pokédex back in the day. Like, it was a physical one that had, like, graphics like a, bat, like a calculator, but, like, it had information on Pokémon of the original 101. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But what else do we have? Um. All right. So, all right. This past week, two um, things before we could go into what we might, if we can or can't, go yeah. into. We'll go into that. Um. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. the game director the, for for the game near Automa, Adama. How do you say that? I think it's Automa. Automa. Okay. Near yes. game director uh, was saying he posted on. It was like an interview, or, or no, he posted this on Twitter. Uh, talking about how he actually wants to see a successor to the uh, PS Vita. Yes. He uh, says, I mean, we with the, our PlayStation fanboys want one. Yes. Yeah. He says, I want to see a Vita successor. The feeling has calmed down a bit after the release of Switch, but I want to play something on a slightly smaller next-gen handheld console. I want something that could satisfy... <laughs> you want something my... slightly smaller. <laughs> something smaller. Okay. That can satisfy my itch that can't be done through a smartphone without physical buttons. So... So basically, this, he wants like another switch, a slightly smaller switch. Slightly smaller switch, or you know, some successor to the Vita, something that's like powerful but still portable. Um, so that kind mm. of brings the question: What do you want out of a, a Vita successor? Like, if, if Sony were to crack down and say, "Okay, yeah, we're going to do another portable console," they're crazy, but which they are. The R and they're crazy. Is Sony is crazy enough to do it again. <laughs> And the R and D team has probably worked out something, and we probably know in those labs. <sighs> I mean, uh, you know what Sony will copy from like the Wii, you know, for onto the move, right? So you know, whatever they saw of Nintendo for the Switch, you know, they're going to be looking at this for whatever next portable system they might be working on, right? So it's like this time it won't be a um, the main system for the company. It will be a like a sub thing, you know. The PS4 Pro is the main one right now. Well, just the PS4 in general. So you're thinking more like TV connectivity. Yeah, something along those lines. Well, actually, no. I don't. I don't know if they'd even bother with that. Like, what do you think? Like, if Vita Two would have like a docking station where you plug into the TV? I mean, they put out the the, the PlayStation TV thing, which was like, oh, look, play your video games on your TV. Yeah. But like, half of them didn't work because they didn't work without the touchscreen and all that. So like, if they can just like, I mean, all they needed to put out for the Vita was like a freaking HDMI cable adapter thing, so you can plug it directly to your TV and you can still use your Vita and use the touchscreen and all that. And you can still play your video games on TV, but no. Nope. Yeah, because, you know, there's that elegance of the Switch of being able to do that, but that's a weird line to draw along because, like, you have the PS4 Pro, or hypothetically, or just a standard PS4. So, and then hypothetically, there's Vita 2, or, you know, Vita successor to come out, you know, around PlayStation 5 era, then what's the point? <laughs> you know, um,. Like it's 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 overshadow overshadowing things, and then on top of that, you already got PSVR hypothetically, so it's already like 
you know, if we get like a second generation of that. So it's weird. Um, so it's hard. So I've been thinking about this now. <laughs> now, just just. I mean, just, I haven't put much thought into it, but I, I mean, I, because I, you know, Switch out. Yeah, I know, but I put some thought into this. So just, just, just. Don't say nothing yet. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna tell no, you. My, no, no, no. I, no, I'm okay. gonna tell you my. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you my whole crazy, batshit crazy pitch on what the Vita Two is gonna be. Okay. I know. I'm gonna. I'm going this, this is gonna be crazy. All right. Just, 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 just hear me out for a minute. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm holding. I'm strapping in. Strapping in. Okay. So here it is. The the Vita Two is gonna be similarly designed to what the similarly designed to what the Vita is now you got the big screen in the middle then you got your little Vita you know, two point, was, well, similar design to Vita 2.0 yeah Sim- similar design not, not completely different but maybe a little bigger um because like okay you're still gonna have the screen in the middle you're gonna have the buns on the side all right so when you go to the store and you, so when you go to the store and buy this this Vita 2 all right it comes with a portable system with your screen your buttons and stuff on the side but it comes with a uh, totally it, it's, it's a, it comes with a second thing that's totally optional but it does come with it. Comes okay. with comes with a headset. Okay. So <laughs> what kind of headset? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting there. So it comes with this headset, all right? So when you're playing your Vita 2, you can play it as is. You can play it right off the system. You can play, you know, whatever game you're playing. You can just play normal like you would the Vita the Vita 1, but you're playing the Vita 2. It's a little more powerful. You can play it like as is. But if you want to, and you're on the move, you can bring this headset on. You put the headset on. You strap your Vita 2 into the headset, and then the, the little side buttons snap off just like Nintendo Switch, and then you got portable VR, where the Vita, the Vita, the main like screen is still sitting in your headset, and you're in a VR experience, and then you got the two little control things in your hand, and they move, and they move your hand, so you're in a VR experience portably, and then when you're done, you snap them back on the side, take your Vita out of the headset, and you can put the headset in your backpack or something. And then when you get somewhere, you just sit down, put the headset on, snap your Vita in, snap off the controls. You got your, like, moving hands, doing your VR experience wherever. And then, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wait. So, like, why are we wanting, first of all, like, a lower end, even the lower end headset than what is already available? Well, no. The point is that this is a portable VR experience. Yeah, but, like, what's the... What? A portable okay, other than what we've already have received on smartphones, I mean, has portable VR even really gone off yet? Well, I mean it's something that they keep pushing for, like we see in the Samsung commercials. They're trying. Like, They're trying. like the Samsung commercials like make you think that people are gonna be wearing this every day, and this is like that next step of like if Sony backs it. Because you're saying, Well, why do you want to lower in? But that's the whole point of a portable handheld is that it's a lower in game experience. Why would you want a lower in game experience when you can just play your PlayStation Pro at home? You know, that's the whole point. That's portable. Yeah, it yeah but be- it's even it's segmenting more VR headsets then because when Sony's just trying to focus on one right now. <laughs> but the point is, yeah. like, most of it's done on the Vita itself. When it snaps in, it's kind of like what the Samsung Galaxy thing does where the headset itself is pretty cheap and it's mostly the phone doing the work with the headset kind of, like, tracking movement, you know? Yeah, that could, that could be a potential thing where it's not, you know, an, an overly expensive item. Yeah, but, like... The headset would have to come with it. You can't say, oh, by the way, the Vita 2 supports VR, but only if you buy the headset separately. No, like Sony has to bundle the headset with it and say, the headset's totally optional. You can totally play the Vita 2 without being in VR. You can totally play without it. But if you want a portable VR experience, you just have to snap it in and then the little controls snip on the side so you can do like full, you know, hand motion. Or, you know, if you have your, you know, maybe you can like connect your like DualShock 4 to it with Bluetooth, you know? Yeah, but, like, how are the games going to be designed around this? Well, you know, like, they just kind of like how they are now, where, like, oh, like, Until Dawn, like, you can play with the DualShock 4, and you can just play that on your Vita screen. Like, just play it in 2D on your Vita 2 or whatever, and then when you snap it into the headset, it becomes the VR experience, you know? Yeah, but doesn't it look a little funny? I mean, like, because you can project the PlayStation VR games, standard PlayStation VR games on the TV, right? Yeah. So then they're just playing the game, like, so oddly, then. They're going to look so weird. You always look weird when you're playing VR, though. Yeah, but like when you're in the VR, you're actually in it, and you get a better perspective. But like when you're on the TV, TV it's just 2D and flat, and it's all weird. But that no, like it would just play in 2D, like on your VR, like you would. We, it, it's not when you're playing a VR game. It's in VR in your headset, and it's just outputting at 2D flat on your TV. That's why it looks weird. But like the game will just play in 2D, kind of like games now, where like Resident Evil Seven looks normal. When you play it without the VR, and when you put it on the VR, it becomes VR. 
Oh, so like it's not like a full 360. Well, I mean, yeah, when you when you put it on, like when you put the VR thing on your head, it becomes 360. Yeah. VR, you know. So that's what I'm saying. Like, what the, this isn't. This is how it's always been. This is how it's always be when you put it in VR. It switches to VR mode. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, like it's the, an idea. I mean, but, well, you know, it's, Nintendo was already looking at something for VR for Switch. I mean, there's just an idea, but they don't really have anything for it. There's no way you can strap that thing onto a headset. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know, man. I think we're just going to have to Steve Jobs and just ask this idea. It's too complicated. Well, Sony needs to listen to this podcast and hear my crazy ass pitch and be like, and they that, say no. And they'll say, <laughs> they'll say that is genius. We're going to do that. We're going to do a portable VR experience. I don't know if the whole idea of like a Vita is supposed to offer VR, though. I mean, it's an option. It's totally optional. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, you don't it is optional, to... but should they even like aim for it, then? Like, what's the point? Well, we have to give people options. You can't just say, oh, this is a portable VR experience, and you can only play in VR. Yeah, but like, you just ask the VR entirely and just have games. But that didn't work the first time. Yeah, but like it's even on a okay. So you're stacking a niche item already to an even more niche item. Yeah, but like like I said, they're just tapping into that mobile VR. Because at market least with like the the phone thing is like easier because everyone has a phone, and, yeah. and that's all you need. And all you need is that head strap, and that's what makes it. Well, that's the thing with the Vita too. Like I said, it'll be optional, but it still comes with it. Like it would still come with the headset piece. So like you know, you buy your Vita two, thinking, oh, I really want to play. I don't know. Let's say they do like another kill zone or something at launch. You know, like, oh, I really want to play kill zone portably. This new kill zone portably. So I get my Vita 2. And it's like, oh, cool. I'm playing this kill zone. It's really cool. And then guess what? Hey, if I want, if I feel like it, guess what? There's a VR mode for it. So I snap it in and then do. I'm playing kill zone in VR, you know, using a motion control that would snap off the side or just using a blue, using a PS, a DualShock 4, you know, Bluetooth connected to it, you know? Look, man, that could be a possibility. Could be a possibility, but and isn't VR like going out about a little dangerous? <laughs> like, well, no, like it's gonna be one of those things where like they tell you like, no, sit down, like don't walk be in a train this. or anything, yeah, or like, like you know, train, be out in public you're sitting, places. You're sitting in class. I mean, it's the same thing. The same warnings they give you when you put on like the Samsung Galaxy, uh, or Galaxy, whatever the hell it's called, Samsung Gear, whatever the hell the VR is called. The gear, the gear. gear. Yeah, gear or um, cardboard box once Google's doing or what you know, all Google that cardboard. Like, Google cardboard, like all those tell you the same thing. Like, oh, we recommend you stay sit you know, stay in a seated position while playing this. Like don't, you know, try to ride your bike while wearing this, you know. Um, <laughs> Riding a bike and playing games. Wow, that would be that would Yeah, really so like it's gonna be the same things they tell everyone else. And I mean there is the, that that market that's trying to build that portable VR, so it's just one of the things where Sony can be like, oh, we can be the front line of that by doing this fully dedicated gaming portable VR thing, you know? So Yeah, I see what you mean. Like I said, that is just my crazy pitch. That was my crazy pitch. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know if that's ever going to actually happen, but it's just a crazy enough idea that Sony might just run with. So. What else do we have? What else we have? We have questions. We yeah, we do. But I wonder, can we even talk about Mass Effect and Andromeda? Sure, why not? Okay, dokie. Why wouldn't we be able to talk about Mass Effect? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm just making sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can talk about that. Okay. <laughs> um, as, as people know... <laughs> as the people know. know as the people know Mass Effect Andromeda launched this week actually yes, it, did. it did um to uh like some middling reception I mean the game is good right I mean you played it extensively yeah. I have played, played it for hours? at least 10 hours at least 10 hours possibly probably more I don't know I don't remember what my exact count was yeah so you're all into it you're you're getting you're you're through you're, you're you're getting through it. <laughs> I'm getting through it. What? <laughs> you're getting through it, man. Um. So we have some uh, negative answers here in the in the <laughs> chat. We don't, we're not streaming this live. 
in the in the questions here. Can they even mm-hmm. speak? <laughs> uh, this one comes from Jordan. Mm-hmm. Do you think EA didn't put out a Mass Effect collection because they knew Andromeda was garbage? <laughs> and all, uh, last, th- this 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 comment came a day before the game came out, so just to let you know. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if Jordan they knew it the was. EA, like you know, if you play the EA Access thing or anything like that, he knew it was but garbage. Like what? All right. He knew. It was garbage. He knew. So no, this it, is, it's this it, is the it, delivery here. I I'm not saying this, Jordan. Yeah, is. I, understand, so, I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. I know you're not calling it garbage. This this particular person, Jordan, is is saying it. Um, yeah, it is garbage. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So it's not like EA put out any HD collection. So they really stuck by their word when they said that they don't really want to focus on doing. HD re-releases or whatever, because they haven't done any, right? Nope, nope. So they haven't um, done any. Nope, I don't think so. Right? Nope. I mean, not even any HD putouts not, like uh, Ubisoft with um, Assassin's Creed or anything like that. No, yeah, they actually, they haven't done any collections or anything. So it's one of those things where, like, I, I could maybe see that question if they like, let's say they put out a bunch of other ones and not Mass Effect. You know? Yeah, like. Where maybe they saw the quality of what Mass Effect Andromeda was and just didn't even bother to put a collection because more people have been buying the collection than Andromeda. Yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. Which would be sad. Hmm, that sounds like another game that came out this past year. Oh, shit. Wait, what, which one was that one? Call of Duty. <laughs> oh, yeah, for buying, yeah, the... Um... That's right. Yeah, yeah. for buying uh, the Legacy Edition covering up. It's like if Mass Effect Andromeda came with like the original <laughs> trilogy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the mask, the game. Uh, oh. oh. Okay, but okay, so yeah, maybe Jordan could have a possible point, but the fact that Mass Effect Andromeda isn't garbage, like you know, straight garbage. It's not garbage. But, it is not. Gar- yes. It's a, f- a bit of a hyperbole there to say it's hyperbole. garbage, huh? Yeah, for a bit there, just like the general and internet, because you know, I mean, basically, Mass Effect Andromeda has been quite the laughing stock in the internet for the past week or so, because you know it's the new thing to kick to the ground. So, you know, I, I guess Jordan was just kind of adding to it, I guess. And then our next one's also going to somewhat add to it, but I don't know if it's um, quite as bad. But you know, if this comes from Twitter, Joseph says, uh, "Do you think Bioware will go out of business?" Hope you uh. can answer. Oh, hope, hope we can answer. Okay, well, no, they're not going to go out of business. All right. Um, so, <laughs> like the end of the world. I don't. What are people seeing here? Like, I. I, I, guess, you know, it's, mm. I mean, this is. It's not like this is the first Bioware game that got like mixed reviews or anything. It'll, yeah, it'll, well, actually, my best effect in drama is not really mixed. It's actually like in like the seventy tier. It's not. Yeah. It's not bad. So it's not, I mean, that's what, yeah, I mean, is 60. this is about, yeah, this is about the same reviews like Dragon Age 2 got, you know, and around like, that, yeah, it is actually around that. Well, I mean, didn't, wasn't Dragon Age 2's middle, like around 80 and 80, like low 80, so, or 70, 70 80, or something. something like that. So like, because Dragon Age 2, I remember Dragon Age 2 came out, everybody like freaked out because like, compared to, you know, compared to Origins, like, oh my God, what the hell is this? Because you Origins know? was on this high pedestal for yeah. people that was like. It couldn't. It can't be touched. Dragon, it can't Age be touched. Origins, Dragon Age Origins is one of the best games ever made, and then they, and then you got the pointed at the Bioware fanboys. That it, it, I mean, is that true though? I mean, someone that hasn't even delved into the Dragon Age franchise. I mean, is that true? Do people really put um, like Origins on that high of a pedestal where it can't be touched, like um, ever? I don't know about that, but I do freaking love. Well, I do freaking love Dragon Age Origins though. It is one of because the- where people are so like, oh, they hate two, but then they're not even into Inquisition. But, so like, then people are like, oh, Origins is it. Origins is the, is the game. Yeah, I mean, out of the three, I'd probably ultimately say Origins would probably be the best. It's not um, a nostalgia-like situation where it's like, oh, it's it, the first one. It's like, it, Origins is the game. It, it might be, but the, thing like, about, but the thing about Origins was, here's, here's the thing about Origins. So I put it off for the longest time, all right? Mm-hmm. Like, I played Mass Effect 1 and 2. I love those games so much, especially Mass, Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 2 is also one of my favorite games of all time. Um, mm-hmm. and then it was one of the things where I loved those games so much that like I kept hearing about Dragon Age, like oh Dragon Age is so good, you know it's probably better than Mass Effect <laughs> and all this and that. And then, better. and then I started looking at a little bit of gameplay. I was kind of like eh, I don't know about this. And then and then like, what about but, like that console the PC difference yeah, right there was like, that yeah the, it, was, it was more like a PC game so the console versions kind of like just like a 
you know, the way it looked. Right? It wasn't that yeah. best at the time. That's when developers yeah. were having a troubled, like a troubled time with PlayStation Three. Mm-hmm. So like, and then by the time I played Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age Two was already out. Mm-hmm. And then like, I remember when Dragon Age, because like, I remember when Dragon Age Origins came, out, everybody swore how great it was and how amazing. It was. <laughs> and, then, and then when Two came out, it was kind of like everybody was like, "Well, what happened?" You know, like, "Oh, Dragon Age Two, like, you know what this is." Um, but then when I finally played Origins, I was like, "Oh shit, this is amazing." <laughs> <laughs> like Origins was so good, I was just so, so enamored with that game. And then when I play two, two is like I've already kind of talked about this a bit, but two is such a different game than what Origins was. Like the thing with two was they're trying to make it more like Mass Effect. Yeah, and then um, let's not forget like putting in perspective here. This game came out in twenty eleven, and this was at a time when Bioware was at a height in terms of the amount of projects. Put out, mm-hmm. you know, they were like they had they were working on Mass Effect three, and Mass Effect three was originally supposed to go on twenty eleven, right before it got delayed. Yep. to March. Well, I don't I don't remember if that one was like a full delay or if it was like you know one of the be, but it was supposed to come on twenty eleven. So you know we were supposed to have like uh, Old Republic, Dragon Age two, and Mass Effect three within a short period of time. And granted, there's multiple teams at Bioware, but that's insane. So they were rush rushing these games. Yeah, because that was the thing. Like, Dragon Age 2 came out, like, I think it was, like, 18 months after Origins. I remember it was kind of really close. Yeah. After Origins, like, Dragon Age 2 came out, and when you played it, you're kind of like, okay, I kind of see, because, like, what they did was it was basically made off the Magic Effect 2 engine, and, like, kept everything. Like, oh, the pause menu was the exact same pause menu for Mass Effect. So it was really <laughs> weird, like, like yeah. why is it sci-fi? Why does all these menus look very sci-fi, and then the game is all, like, you know, medieval fantasy? <laughs> It's like kind of like one of those like futuristic games have like some films and TV shows portray like certain games. It's always like so futuristic, but like the actual game doesn't match like the new sort of like the UI at all. Yeah, that, uh, that's what it was. The so UI weird. didn't match. Yeah, the UI didn't match the game. It was really weird. Dragon Age Two, and it was one of those things where yeah, they it was kind of like what we talked about a while ago with um, Evil mm. Within. Like I'm afraid they might streamline it a bit, and that was the thing from Origins to um, Dragon Age Two. Dragon Age Origins was like straight up RPG. Um, you know, you can, like, guide your people, and then when you attack, you're not really attacking. You're kind of like, like, oh, you press X to swing, and your guy just auto-swings until you, like, switch the attack to, like, square, which is, like, heavy attack, and he just keeps going until you switch oh, the attack. so quasi-turn-based? Yeah, so... something like that. Okay. I'm not sure the exact term, but yeah, it's like that. You, like, you, you click the attack, and then he keeps doing it until you switch the attack, where Dragon's 2 is just action-based. You press X, you swing. You press X, you swing again. You know? Right. Um, so that threw a lot of action off. RPG action RPG exactly so they more action it's more fast paced so that threw a lot of the hardcore fans off like what like what is this mm. like those, this? those hardcore drag- because now they came out more than ever for this for this game they, yeah. they, they're like then, oh, this pedestal then, of Dragon Age Origins uh, that's the game yeah. what about Inquisition this is the big one what about Inquisition see Inquisition was really good because it did both you could do both like you can play it action like uh, two, where you just keep swinging, or if you push down the touchpad, it goes up and it becomes like Dragon's Origins, where you guide out the characters and make them do. The, but then just apparently, like... that's still enough for the fans because they don't even like that game, and see for some whatever reason, oh it seems God. like. Yeah, it's like. Fans. But Dragon Age Inquisition so was so good. <laughs> and it won multiple Game of the Year awards. It was my Game well, of the Year. <laughs> but um, it's weird, like. Right now, at least, like, I mean, it's not like I have a clear aggregate, but it seems like just, like, people don't like any other, like, Bioware games since Mass Effect 2, basically. Like, any other ones, they just completely just shit all over. Like, oh, oh. Inquisition sucks. Oh, Mass Effect 3 sucked. Oh, Mass Effect. Like, all that. It's just this thing where, like, the the problem is what? RPG fans are the biggest people you don't want to cross. <laughs> Like they could either they can be or they can't because like <laughs> you you, you can't you can't cross RPG people like when you it's same thing with Final Fantasy you know where like oh, oh Final Fantasy is more ridiculous where you keep where like everybody all the hardcore fans like no you keep dumbing it down because it's more and more action based you know and like you're taking away the That's... RPG elements you know um so it's kind of like the story that does, the characters suck yeah yeah, yeah yeah it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. like. Like I said, it's just the problem is like the thing about these big RPGs like Dragon Age Origins or Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2 or whatever. The thing is you spend so much time with it. Like Dragon Age Origins, I put like shit. 
b- between the main game, the DLC, <laughs> between the main game, the DLC, and like going for the platinum, I probably played that game for like seventy plus hours. Mm-hmm. You know, um, same thing with like Mass Effect Two. Mass Effect Two, I probably put like to get the platinum and everything. I probably put like fifty or so hours into it so it's just one of those things where like when you play a really good rpg like that you put so much time into it you get so invested in it and you get you, you do build that <laughs> you do build a nostalgia for it like i have this huge nostalgia thinking back of like all that time i played you know playing dragon's origins for the first time or playing mass effect 2 for the first time like you're just so <laughs> into that and you know it's so different and, and new and just like oh this is amazing and then you know, you get so excited for the sequel, and then the problem is you just have such these expectations that when you play the sequel, it's like, no, it's not the same, man. It's not. I'm not getting that same high I did when I played this the first time. You know, like or, or yeah. it's too different, or like, because that's the thing, like, because like we, we, like Mass Effect Three. It's one of those things where we're like, yeah, Mass Effect Three is really good, but looking back, I still probably say Mass Effect Two is better. You know, the better of the three because you know Mass Effect Three is fine, it's great, but it's it wasn't that huge change or leap over two, like because like. One to two was a huge leap as far as, like, the way the games are, you know? Oh, yeah, so many things that they did. And then there are moments of brilliance in three. Like, yeah, some like, of the best moments yeah, in the trilogy in three. But, there not, were, not but it's marred in some things of its, you know, rushed development and all that of, of Mass Effect 3. You know, you know that game was rushed in many aspects. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, you know. I'm not, I'm not saying three is a bad game, but, yes, looking back. No, it's I'm not. Gonna, I'm going to say two is the best out of the original three. Um, and it's kind of the same thing with, but that's the thing about Dragon Age though. Each game is completely different from the last. <laughs> that's the strange thing. Yeah, Dragon Age is a bit of a weird franchise, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, each game's different. Like the first one's a hardcore RPG, the second one's action RPG, and that threw some fans off. And then three was trying to like mix the two, and fans were just already pissed off, so they just didn't want to accept it. You know. So then um, I guess it's just kind of a, mo- a mode of preference. But then not to go down this rabbit hole though, but it's. In vain of the Bethesda situation, you know, with like Fallout 4, you know, like where, you know, Fallout New Vegas is on this high pedestal too. Where yeah, it's well, like, but that's what I'm Fallout saying. Fallout New though, Vegas, like, man. No Fallout one could be Fallout man. New Vegas. But again, like, Fallout well, that's, yeah, because the thing about New Vegas was like, everybody loves Fallout 3. Everybody loves Fallout 3. Like, oh, yeah, Fallout 3 is amazing, you know, because it was different. It was different from anything people kind of played at the time, you know, because it's this huge open world. You got these guns and building and like this really cool thing. And then when New Vegas came out, Again, RPG, it was kind of perceived RPG. kind of like not the greatest at first, at right? First, but then it, but it took some time. It took some time because people grew to love it because the reason, because again, these these hardcore RPG you fans they really it. get into it because like the thing about New Vegas was New Vegas had all these like extra RPG elements that wasn't in Fallout 3, you know? Yeah, that's right. Like, oh, there's branching paths, you know, if you if you if you side with these guys that it locks out certain quests on this side and then there's more like, you know, hardcore mode where you have to constantly drink water or you kind of have to sleep and then there's you know, just all like that shit. Like, yeah, all that crazy shit. Yeah, that basically stuff wasn't in AZ three. That wasn't in Fallout three. Yeah, like like all that was in New Vegas and off three. And then when they did four, they made it like three, and they didn't do all those like hardcore RPG stuff like in Vegas. And that's what threw a lot of fans off. Like, no, I wanted all the RPG stuff from New Vegas. And but like, but the thing is about Fallout four. Like Fallout four has a hardcore mode now. You know, it does. Like, and then on top of that, people need to remember the developer. I mean, this one made both Bethesda, not Obsidian. Yeah, Obsidian did uh, New Vegas. So it is a different developer. Um, it is a different developer. But that's what they also need to know about that. Yeah, they need to know that. And then, then like, yeah, but like Fallout 4 has been updated, has hardcore more now where you constantly have to drink, you know, you have to sleep, all these th- different things. So you can kind of make the experience what you want a bit more now. I mean, yeah, you still don't have all like, oh, weapon breakdown and um, stuff like that, which I know a lot of fans really wanted. Um, oh, the weapon breakdown. Weapon breakdown, man. I want to keep fixing my bat. My bat needs to break after a while, right? <laughs> <laughs> as always. As always. But man. then again, people like that hardcore stuff, though. Yeah, like people like as, it. And let's I just see, joke about it. Yeah, you know, people like I do, it. Yeah, people like it. I do see the appeal of it, but it's one of those things where, like, those little things can't really take away from the whole game, you know, right? Like, there's still a really good game there. Just because just because your bat doesn't break doesn't mean that Fallout 4 is a horrible, terrible game. And Bethesda should go yeah, out of business. Yeah, it's like the same vein of why we can't have AI in games that are too smart. Because, like, you know, we can't have that. It makes games, like, unplayable. Yeah. Not I mean, fun. There just needs to be certain... They need, they need... Yeah, I mean, something developers need to look into is, like, maybe more games need to have a hardcore mode. You know? Right, where yeah. you know the AI is because we, up we can impl- implement them afterwards. Wait, what's the one game? No, Zelda, right? Breath of the Wild that's getting like a hard mode like later on in its season pass. I can't fully remember. Like Maybe. Zelda's getting some some form of a hard mode. 
yeah. afterwards. I'm already hearing that game is already difficult, already kind of start. So I can't imagine like a more difficult mode. So like Nintendo is even putting in like into their games a more difficult mode in their games. Like Breath of the Wild's getting one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is something yeah, developers need to look into more. Like like you said from the start, like have it there from day one as a hardcore mode for these fans that want you know more challenge, more kind of features to like survival, more kind of more focus on RPG and. Like I said, I totally get it because I because I, I talked about it. Like I said, I talked about Evil Within. Like I'm afraid that's going to happen with Evil Within. Like they're going to take out a lot of kind of what made Evil Within so great. Like the hardcore, like the hardcore survival. Like I need to spend my points right. I need to decide. You need to spend your points. Need, yeah, I need to decide. You know when to spend my points, what to put it towards guns and stuff like that. Like I understand mm-hmm. that, but you still kind of have to look at the game for what is there. You know. And a very needy episode of the PSBS right very, here. Very needy. <laughs> very, but I mean, this, but this is a real thing, and this and this this whole idea right now is being applied to Mass Effect Andromeda right now. Like this is why people are like freaking out of Andromeda because it's like you know they have such this nostalgia of playing Mass Effect Two and like really getting kind of lost in it, and then and then the fans already kind of got burned on three. So it's one of those things where like, oh, I'm already you know already got kind of mad at three, so this game needs to be better. And then when they kind of play and they realize, no, it's not, or whatever, they freak out and say it's, you know, garbage or... They completely oh, garbage, where you have, like, the Metacritic score to be, like, in below 30s. Yeah, right? we're like, oh, user score is just tearing this thing apart, and like, oh, Bioware's gonna go out of business, and, you know... Um, and no, like, that's not gonna happen. Bioware's not gonna go out... This game is still gonna sell incredibly well. Um, I think so. So it's just one of those things where, like, people just have this expectation if it does not you know, match that expectation exactly, they're going to freak out. And that's kind of the thing here. And like I've and I've played Mass Effect and Drama. I've played it for over ten hours. It's great. I'm having so much fun with it. Mm-hmm. You know? Kind of going back into that world. And yeah, it's a different kind of it's different in a way. It's kind of the same but a little different, you know? Um mm-hmm. there's a few little things that kind of annoy me about it. Yes. Like you, like one of the things is yeah they took away like there's less control of your companions or squad mates or whatever they're called is there even like a squad selection screen yeah like you can pick who who you bring okay. on the missions yeah but like it's a little like right now that's my biggest disappointment is just the um kind of lack of control with your squad mates everything else i'm having yeah. a fun time with like exploring the world going on the missions just uh, doing all this and that, but right now the one thing that's kind of got me going, oh, why did they dial this back? Was the companion stuff? Like, there's only there's only six total, right? To even unlock, and that's it. So there's only six. I don't know how much there was in the other games. I want to say more, but again, that's nostalgia. Like, oh no, no, in Mass Effect Two they had like twenty people you can bring, you know? In your yeah, you, like you have that nostalgia. Like, no, there's like tw- yeah, like there's twenty people in the Mass Effect Two you can pick from, and like. Probably go back and play Mass Effect 2. Like, no, it was probably like six or seven or something, you know? Um, Depending on what point you are in the game. Yeah, who you can bring and whatever whatever on missions. But, like, you know, and then you play this one and it's like six. Like, your gut reaction is like six. That doesn't seem like a lot. But, like, like I said, I don't know. I don't remember how many was in the previous game. So it's like, okay, so you have six. All right. But then, like, you pick two of them to go with you. Okay. But, like, when you're in combat, all you can really do is, like, tell them where to go and who to shoot at. But you can't, like... Because, like, in Mass Effect 2 and 3, you can, like, slow down time, aim at an enemy, and then tell them what attack to use. You know, like, tell them, you know, use Shockwave. Tell them use, you know, incendiary rounds. Like, you can you know, like you can directly tell them what to do, you know, when you point at an enemy. In Andromeda, right. you, in drama, you can't. All you can do is point and tell them to shoot. You can't tell them what to do. Like, you can't tell them exactly what to shoot hmm. them with. You know? Oh, so in Andromeda, you can't even do that? Yeah, like, you can tell them who to shoot, you just can't tell them how to shoot. You know? Oh, I see. Yeah, like, you can't tell them, you know, what gun to use. You can't tell them what attack to use. You can just say, hey, shoot that guy, and that's it. Like, you can't say, hit him with shockwave, hit him with, you know, concussion blast or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Which is really weird because, like, there's still trophies for doing, like, combo attacks and stuff. So now it kind of makes it random where you have to be, like, look for it. Like, oh, he, she hit him with a shockwave. So now I got to hurry and hit him with this attack. So that way it becomes a combo. You can't make the combo because you can't tell her what to do. 
you know? <laughs> yeah. So it kind of makes that more random. So I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> and and you can't equip you can't equip your teammates with guns. So like if you buy like let's say you buy a new shotgun, like, oh I really like this shotgun, you have the old shotgun, you can't give it to a squad mate and make them use it. Oh, that's a bummer. I actually liked how in Mass Effect three you were able to like really take control of your armory. Yeah, like all those extra guns you have, you can just give them to your squad mates and like so your squad mates always has the best guns, you know? So it's like you can't do that. <laughs> So all those extra guns you have, you just have to sell them or, you know, um, break them down. Storm in your chest? Um, I don't think there's a chest of storm, man. I don't see it. If there is, I don't see it. <laughs> but, which is weird, because, like, in Inquisition, that was one of the first things they patched into Inquisition was a storage chest. <laughs> like, when, when, when Dragon's Inquisition came out, everybody was complaining, there's no storage chest, where am I going to put all my extra shit? And then, <laughs> where like, am I going to put all my shit? <laughs> 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 you know, so like, it's so like that was one of the first things they patched into Inquisition was, oh, oh, sorry, we didn't put that in. Here's the storage chest. They patched it in for free. Like, here it is. It's at your main base. Oh, go, wild, dude. Go, oh, my God. Go, go, go store all your shit. And then like, in Andromeda, it's not there. Or at least I don't see it. So like, that was, you forgot to put it in Inquisition. You're going to forget to again. put it in Andromeda again? Dude, this is so nasty stuff because like, <laughs> I mean, they didn't, it's not like when they put out Knights of the Old Republic back in the day. It's not like if they forgot one thing, they could have patched that game. That game was that game. Yeah. That's the fascinating part about it. It's like, like oh, sorry, we forgot to put the storage crate in. Sorry. It's like if they forgot one important thing about Knights of the Old Republic, then people would have flipped out back in the day. Yeah, you couldn't fix it. Um, but yeah, it's just so funny that, like, like I said, I don't think it's there. It might be there. I just don't see it. But I, I mean, it would only make sense. Look, I just thought about that just as you were talking about it. I mean, because I went to the locker room. It says locker room, and all you can do in the locker room is change your loadout. There's no way to like store your guns. It just says change your loadout. Can you change your outfit? Yes, you can change your armor and outfit and all that. You can't change your companions' outfits, but you can change yours. What the heck? I but mean, wasn't me, that such a good selector? Because wasn't in the okay, going back to the nostalgia that in Mass Effect two and three, you could only you press like what triangle, and they, there's like another one. It's like yeah, just a and, difference. Yeah, and two and three, was. yeah, and two and three, there's only uh, one alternate suit per character, and that was only like, if, you did their, if you did their loyalty mission, you could, you unlock the, the extra suit for them. That's right, but and then it, like literally from Miranda's, it was just a different color. Yeah, it was just a different color. She went from a white suit to black suit. <laughs> That was it. It's a black suit. Boy, if you play Mass Effect 1, oh, you can like equip them with all kind of armor and upgrade their guns and all that. <laughs> right. You know. Um but yeah, so but you can still you can still you can still level up your car- your, your companions, don't worry. All your companions have their own stat screens that you can level up. So you can decide, you know, where their points go when they level up. Mm-hmm. So that's still there. Or that RPG stuff's still there like with the points. Right. Um, so that's still there, but yeah, you can't give them guns. You can't tell them directly how to attack, just who right. to attack. So yeah, so far that's kind of the one thing that's disappointed me so far is the, the kind of lack of control with your companions. Um, mm-hmm. But everything else, though, I've been having so like having a lot of fun with. Just like I said, just getting back into that Mass Effect world again. Just kind of talking with people, getting to know them, getting to know your crew, going in these missions, exploring planets and just kind of getting lost in these like little side missions and stuff because like there's there's a point where like i play for two hours straight and never shot my gun because i was just so focused on just doing like the random like little side quest that involved just walking around and talking to people and what it seems like also you're boosting a lot in the game jumping and boosting jumping jumping and boosting and stuff like that <laughs> or being in the vehicle yeah being in the vehicle yeah i, I was surprised too i actually like the vehicle because most of the time i don't like driving vehicles in games um but you know, it's a well, big, I don't know. It seemed like a Ghost Recon really put you off. Yeah, on. Ghost Recon was <laughs> Wildlands was terrible. I can't fly a plane to save my life in that game. Um, and you, you said the even on land, the land. The landing is very story. hard. You have to actually know how to land a plane in order to land a plane in Wildlands. <laughs> and you didn't even like the land vehicles either, like the. <laughs> no, I didn't like the vehicles either. Like it's just no, I didn't like any of the, the control of the vehicles in uh, Wildlands. But I do like the vehicle in. Um, Mass Effect, because it's, it's simple, you know, it just goes there, and you have, it's a lot of open areas, so you don't have to worry too much about, like, falling off cliffs and stuff like that, um, yeah. too much, and, um, and there's no, as of right now, I don't, I don't know if you can add it on or something, but right now there's no, like, guns or anything on it, so if you run into enemies, you have to either just run them over, or just get out and shoot them, 
Yeah, I saw that. You could just run over a bunch of enemies. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I understand why there's no guns on it. Because, I mean, if, if there was, it'd be like Batman or Arkham Knight. You just start shooting everyone in your tank and never get oh, out. Oh, gosh. We don't want that again, do we? <laughs> Arkham Knight nope. is so focused on the car. Or all the boss uh, battles in Mass Effect. Yeah. Or... Oh, God. Yeah, every boss battle in Mass Effect, you'd be inside the tank or inside the thing. Oh, God. So cartoony. That's why I never wanted to ever beat um <laughs> Arkham Knight, I never bought. When you told me that shit, like the ending and all that, I'm like, what? What? So cartoony, like PS1 era, just, you know, like I went the park. I went back and platinumed it, though, Arkham Knight. It's like uh, a Jack X. Jack X Racing, yeah. Or whatever other games that you need to, like, deplete a health bar in a vehicle in order to beat the, <laughs> the boss. It's just so, like, just... The way it fits into that, like Arkham World, just it doesn't make any sense. To me. So that's why I never mm-hmm. bothered. But it's just fascinating, you know, having both of these RPG franchises like Fallout and Mass Effect not being as well received as you know the original. Like I said, like I said it, it, a lot of yeah, that, that whole thing that you're of, giving. yeah, the whole speech thing. Like I said, just basically yeah, that's what it is. It's just a lot of nostalgia, a lot of kind of like I said, being so invested in this game that. And it's like I said, it's new at the time. Like when you play Fallout Three, yeah, it's Fallout Three, but it's nothing like one and two. So like when you play Fallout Three, it was like nothing you played before. So it's just like, oh man, like really getting deep into this world and everything. When you play Mass Effect Two, it's like nothing else at the time. I mean, there was a Mass Effect One, but they're so different games, you know, that when you play two, it's just so good and you get invested in it, and then you pick up this new one, and if it's not what not 100 percent what you're expecting you freak out and that's kind of what's happening here with andromeda it's just like little things are just taking people off like people are really freaking out over the companion thing like i'm talking about and like I said, i'm a little disappointed too by it but it's not breaking the game it's not making me say this is garbage you know <laughs> hyperbole hyperbole you know i mean it's a it's a good game man it's great if you played if you've played mass effect games and you like them and you you're okay with it being a little different or whatever, then you're gonna like Andromeda. All right, it's really good. <laughs> so like, don't freak out, don't harass people. Yeah, don't harass Bioware. Don't call it. <laughs> don't 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 you know write them off and be like, oh, Bioware is terrible, and you know it's uh, you know. They're another fallen off developer. Uh, like no, Mass Effect drama is great. All right. Um, I don't want to add. I know. It's 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 difficult to reinvent the wheel because, look, the only thing I'm really disappointed overall at the end of the day with Aspect of Drama is that it really didn't do much to kind of reinvent the wheel because this was like the first thing ever when we even kind of knew about Mass Effect and Drama was that that feeling of like, oh man, is it going to be like 2007 all over again with the, you know, it coming out and like changing a lot of things for the RPG yeah. genre, but it's it, that's hard to do. But- so many things have to align. But in order the, for that to happen, but that's like the I thing. already, I, I set that expectation that that wasn't going to happen. But that's the thing, I, though. Like we just talked about it too. Like with Dragon Age, like each yeah. Dragon Age game is completely different from the last, and everybody still complained. Like Inquisition is so different from two and one, and yet everybody complained. But you, when you're trying to make Andromeda more like the originals, everybody freaks out again. You know. This one might be a little bit more tricky for you because probably you know, because maybe you probably don't have experience with the prior games. But um, what about like Witcher three? Another game that's uh, high on a pedestal for many people. Yeah. Like, where's that? Yeah, because Witcher 3, well, like I said, I haven't played the first two, so I don't really know how much yeah. different it is from the first two. But again, the, the yeah. thing about Witcher 3 is that for a lot of people, this is their first <laughs> Witcher game, you know? Yeah, like, that too, right? Like, like, nothing touches Witcher 3. Yeah, cause they, yeah, because it's their first Witcher game. They haven't played the rest. They don't have that comparison. Um, same thing with Fallout 3. No one played the other ones. There's no comparison. They just see it as, <laughs> as that game. And we had some Dylan. people play it. I mean, Witcher was already a you know a relatively successful RPG oh, franchise, yeah. but then once it went multi-platform and you know the broader fan base and you know more of the budget, of course. Yeah. So this is the uh, thing. Like Witcher Three is the one for most people that's their first Witcher game, and again, it's just so unlike anything out right now. Like it's so new and different, and like it, like I said, it, like I said, it really pushes the the kind of like action RPG genre forward and the open world and just. Yeah. Really, really feels like that big next gen RPG, you know, like really taking advantage of this these new consoles. And you know, and that's why people love it. That's why I loved it. It was my game of the year for that year. It's yeah, no, oddly enough, like after Andromeda's release, like I actually want to play Witcher again. I want to play it. <laughs> I I actually have like a drive to like play Witcher. 
Like, if this game is as great as everyone's saying, even though they played it in, like, 90 minutes, so, like, that's basically nothing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's literally, literally nothing. It's nothing at all. Like, I only was only on my horse for, like, a little bit, and then, you know, trying out Gwent. But, like, if this game really is as good as everyone's saying, it, it's and then, you know, good. just... Then I'm going to be probably be playing Witcher Three over the summer. That's probably the only game I need during the summer. But then the fact that I want to play Horizon Two is also upsetting. But yeah, it's, so, yeah, it's really good. And another, well, this isn't an RPG, but this actually kind of applies to another game we talk about a lot on here. Um, which one? Uncharted Two. <laughs> Because oh yeah, well, it's hard it, to, well, I mean, but it's not like Uncharted Four. No, wait, 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 wait. Because what I was gonna say was the thing is because the thing about Uncharted Two is for a lot of people, Uncharted Two was their first Uncharted game. Like a lot of people didn't play. Yeah, the that's first a nostalgia thing. Like, so it's one of those things where like everybody says, "Oh, Uncharted Two is the best," blah blah blah, because like it was the first one they played. You know, so when three came out, everybody freaked out. Like, oh no, three is garbage. Blah blah blah. blah. Two is the best story, and uh, it's too short. Because. <laughs> You know, it's just kind of like... This magic guy, what the hell is this? But yeah. when, when you had a guy drinking tree sap to be, like, basically invincible, that's okay with you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then you had story retreads from the first game that you didn't play because... Yeah, you didn't you, play the first one, so you didn't... Yeah, you didn't see all those retreads, you know, in the story. The retreads coming. When... Well, I mean, it's not like you have people bashing Uncharted 4. Actually, Uncharted 4... Actually, I'm kind of happy to see that that's probably people's most favorite Uncharted game, actually. Yeah. People didn't turn on Actually, the game yet. I don't. I don't think. Well, let's hope maybe the years go easy on Uncharted Four. I hope it's not like, oh, let's turn on the dime. Actually, Uncharted Four is actually rather garbage. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably. It might. It. I, I don't. You know, knock on wood. But you're like, I just don't want like when the uh, when that like DLC expansion comes out, everybody comes um, back and say like, oh, Uncharted Four was garbage anyway. I don't want to play more of of that. You know. <laughs> yeah. The like. Whatever that was, Uncharted Four. I don't want to play any of that garbage. Or like, God forbid, Last of Us Two comes out, and it's not like, oh, I don't. I hope they don't make it like Uncharted Four and make it like garbage. <sighs> Look, I know we put that on a very surface level, and I can understand some people's, you know, very technical um, criticisms of it. But at the same time, you know, it's still that, you know, kind of that same argument you put out there. You know, of uh, any little thing just puts you off, you know, completely when it's not actually the case, you know. Mm -hmm. Ugh, it's just crazy um, <laughs> setting uh, expectations especially this generation but yeah and then on top of that it's difficult to reinvent the wheel you know uh, Fallout 4 and uh, Mass Effect Andromeda kind of seen that they didn't really do that to an extent but then again it's difficult but they're still good games they're still good games I was playing Fallout 4 for the, I was going back and playing Fallout 4 again like right before Horizon came out and I was really Getting back into Fallout 4, really enjoying it, loving, like I said, I love the crafting system and, yeah. and just exploring and all that. It's great. And then I started playing Horizon and got really into that. And then Drama came out right. this week and playing that and really having a great time with it. It's really good, you know? I just, yeah, that's what, I, oh, yeah, it's not putting down the games at all. I just think it's difficult to um, replicate that impact that yeah, we had in exactly. 2010, 2010, 2008, and 2011, I suppose. It's difficult. Yeah, it's really it difficult. Hard. And, Again, like, well, I mean, it is part three, but like, that was the last game that really, like, really hit the community was like kind of Witcher Three, where like people, yeah, like, Witcher Three, Witcher Three was until the third game because it was only on PC and Xbox. I know, I know it took to the third game, but it, that was like the last game to really, like, well, uh, another one, but the last game. Wait, really... but was uh, Witcher even uh, put out by Bioware? The first one, like, I published or which one? Yeah, it has some Bioware has some involvement with the first game, yeah. Yeah, Witcher wasn't Witcher like because it was on PC and Xbox. It was on the first one's only on PC. The second one's on PC and Xbox 360, and then the third one's on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Right, The Witcher. Witcher yeah, the first weird. one. Was yeah, it's weird. The Witcher schedule. But um, yeah, it's one of those things where like you see that's the thing though. Like I love Witcher three so much that even if they like you know did an HD remaster or whatever the first two games, like I don't even know if I would want to play them. You know because like, okay. Yeah, correction. All right, it was developed by CD Projekt Red, but the publisher was Atari, oddly enough, and um, it was running on the Aurora engine, which is on Bioware's engine. That's all go. it is, Bioware's yeah, it's, engine. It's Bioware's engine. I bet. Yeah. Okay, as you were saying. But um, <laughs> yeah, what I was saying was, yeah, I love Witcher Three so much that even if they were to do like a re-release, remaster, or whatever, the first two games on PS4, it's one of the things where like I don't even think I would want to play them, you know. Because I, because I, because like I said, I, I've played Witcher Three, this amazing game, and like I, it's kind of weird. Like I don't want to go back to the first two, and like they're different, or like they're kind of less than what Witcher Three was. 
you know? Right. So it's one of those things where it's kind of like, eh, I just want to, you know, I just want to stick with this one idea I've had of Witcher 3, you know? Uh, anything on, like, some of the technical aspects people have been kind of begging at uh, Mass Effect Andromeda? Because, you know, it's strange because, you know, we had the original trilogy run on Unreal Engine, and then we have Dragon Age Inquisition and uh, Andromeda running on Frostbite, correct? I mean, was Inquisition on Frostbite? Yes, pretty sure it was. Okay, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are a little uh, negative on some of the technical issues of uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Has, has there been anything for you on technical-wise? Any crashes? Any, like, jankiness? Not or, really. Like, I haven't just had some any... of the typical stuff at all? No, not really. I mean, everything been fine i don't i can't think of anything uh like technical bugs or anything that uh or just wonky things well yeah because it almost seemed like on the level of freaking uh assassin's creed unity even though that one was, is rightly to be um, judged I, I don't for. think anything because because unity you saw me i you saw me when i was playing unity when the level would just disappear yeah yeah you were watching me that night i was doing i was playing multiplayer and i was streaming it to you and yeah you uh, were streaming it and like the yeah. level was just gone, like it's invisible. I was like running around on invisible, like whatever. But then the, we had the fact that some people are playing the um, pre-model, I mean the pre-final release model of Andromeda, I guess. And then you know there were, that one was riddled with some bugs. Mm. But then like any any small bugs, you know, gets blown out of proportion. You know? Oh yeah, but I mean there was like <laughs> a two gig. Uh, there's just, like a two gig day one update for Andromeda. Oh wow! So like anybody that played like the. Um, EA Access, you know, must have been pretty different. Yeah, it might not have had the update. Because I don't think the update came out until, like, the day of or the day before the game came out. Yeah. So. All interesting stuff. We'll have Andromeda sit for a little while, and then we'll see what people... I mean, you have strong impressions, but, you know, really kind of think of it. You know, it's just... It takes time with these games. I mean, we already know what critics think of it. I mean, they've played it for a while, and, you know, it's... It's fine. It's just, uh, I guess, within within the RPG community, which is a very hard community to please. It is that, uh, you know. I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. How how long have we're, we been going on now? Oh yeah, we're at the one hour thirty six minute mark. Oh, this is perfect. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a big topic, man. That was a big topic we covered. I mean, it was an important one. You know, it we was, already it went was. It was, a very, it was a very important big topic to cover. Yeah, uh, because you know, the internet hyperbole is a little ridiculous, and, uh, you know, Mass Effect and drama is not straight up garbage. <laughs> like, it's it's, uh, it's just crazy. Like, if we, if we can't have anything in between anymore, you know, it's always got to be either amazing, like, complete, like, change to the face of the earth, or, you know, just garbage, you know? Like with Netflix adding the like or dislike button, you know, and we even have the like or dislike system in YouTube too, you know. It's just a yes or no. That's it. It's only yes or no. There's no in between, right? Like maybe. I maybe won't know. Maybe I, I give this I give this movie a maybe. Yeah. But um, yeah, we're gonna talk about like schedules next week, right? Hopefully. Yeah. You know, it's a little it's a little difficult to do the show every week. Um, you know, we are only human after all, so don't put the blame on us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I swear, I knew I was only going to use that once, okay? okay. You got it in there, man. <laughs> so don't put the blame on us. Uh, if you watched a Mass Effect uh, drama this launch trailer, you would know what I'm talking about. Or seen a commercial for it on TV? Because they're playing the or commercial. Here. They're playing the commercial on TV with that song. Oh, don't put the blame on me. What do you think about the fact that there's only like a couple new alien races in Andromeda? Does that kind of put you off a little bit? Because the idea of that to me is already kind of like a little janky. I mean, when you're playing the game, you don't really feel it because you're kind of like... Cause again, it's it's not Andromeda like, Galaxy, so you're telling me that the, like all these other alien species are in that galaxy come over to this one? Like, no, you get to the new galaxy and then you only encounter... You only encounter two new ones because all the other species. Because here's, I don't. Because the thing is, I would, have to, I would have to go deep into the story of Andromeda. Okay, forget about it. All right, forget about it. All right, fine, fine. <laughs> I mean, there cool. is an explanation behind it. I'll, there is I'll an explanation. That. Okay, then, then that's fine. All right, I just don't know because you said you had to get into the game for it. I, so. I would have to get into the story a bit, but like there is an explanation behind that. Okay. All right, there is an explanation. Well, that's what put me off. Like the whole idea I was like, wait, what? 
like when I was watching the video review, it was only telling me that there's two alien species. I'm like, what? That's it? Like after all that? Like what was the point of setting in another galaxy than just the terrain? But whatever. Whatever. I guess I guess it's explaining the game. I just don't know. So what? Anyway. So, okay. Anyway, yeah. anyway. With that, this has been the PSPS Plays Bullshit Podcast. I'm your host, Cote, PSN by the voice. My host here is hey, Arenas Double is. Um and no monologue. Just be nice to each other and just uh have fun. Play games. Play games. Do what you want. Do what you want. Go say play. what you want. Say, play what you say want. What you, say what you want to say. Say what you mean to say. Yeah. You can go play. Go finish up Horizon. Go play some Mass Effect. Play Horizon. Uh, oh, don't, don't make me cry right now. Yeah. Oh, Kingdom Hearts is this week, too. On Tuesday. Oh! <laughs> I heard there's a big patch for that one, too, because yeah. apparently, also, when upon reading in uh, some forums and stuff, actually, this port is actually not great. So hopefully this patch is going to fix it apparently because it's already out in Japan. It's been out in Japan, mm-hmm. and um, uh, <laughs> it's got some problems. Well, they but, did. Up, but, they did. Yeah. Well, they did up yeah, the frame rate up, too. Yeah, and plus they're upping the frame rate. So hopefully, yeah, because I actually dealt read it into it a little bit because I was like, oh no, what what is wrong? Like this is just a port to PlayStation Four. What is wrong? And people have listed a laundry list of issues, and hopefully Square Enix is uh, fixing those up. So. Thumbs up to that, hopefully. So, you know, by the time the game releases next Tuesday. Yeah. But, anyway. anyway. Yeah, this has been the real, the actual 93. Yes, the, the real 93. The real 93. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, that's it. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next week. Mm-hmm.